Joining me now to discuss is Joel Steinhaus. He's the former WeWork head of strategic initiatives and now the CEO of hybrid work company Daybase. Joel, welcome. Is this a bittersweet Thanks, day for Kelly. you? <laughs> Well, listen. No, it's it, it's a it's a great day. I mean, I think that this is a a, a real testament to what the future is going to hold, which is all about flexibility. And I think that you know, if if a company wants to succeed in a post pandemic world, they're going to have to think about what's demanded from their talent and and what the talent expects. And so, I think that companies that offer uh, flexibility in this marketplace uh, are really well positioned for the future. You know, we've been talking about SPACs being kind of a challenged investment vehicle. Um, there's There's been evolution. You know, maybe the, the generation coming to market now are not the same that they were six or 12 months ago. But for sort of casual observers who ask you, since you worked at the company, whether we work now would be a good investment, kind of to Sandeep's point about software and the rest of it, what, would, what are your thoughts on, on WeWork today? Yeah, I think that when you evaluate WeWork and other co-working companies, you have to think about it in two ways. You have to think about what market they're playing in. And then the second thing is you do have to think about the value proposition at the end of the day. And the market they're playing is in is enormous. I mean, it's a giant market, which we're, we're talking about the future of work. We're talking about workplace. We're talking about, frankly, the wear of work. And all of those things have been reevaluated as part of the pandemic. And then the value proposition being primarily about flexibility, we think is a really compelling value proposition. What I would say is, and what we're trying to do is, there's a need for another place. That's what we're creating. Mm -hmm. And we think that the future is an ecosystem approach. So you will have a hub space that you use and consume in a very different way, hopefully a more efficient way. And then you'll have spokes. And that's what we're building out as a, as a network of spokes. So we really think that there's going to be an ecosystem approach that companies take going forward. You know, we looked at some WeWork and, and co-sharing. I think Serendipity was a regional one. Um, they were very expensive. And I wonder if the future of flex workspaces is actually to be able to use that corporate card, <laughs> Joel, and expense it. You know, as companies shift from having everybody in-house to maybe paying for those seats to be in a space like yours, do you think that they could become a bigger share of your client mix over time instead of, you know, workers themselves? Yeah, we, we do. I mean, we think about it in two ways. We think about we want to serve the individual user and really solve for the pain points of working from home that were surfaced from the pandemic. We also want to perpetuate some of the benefits that were surfaced. I mean, people have talked about not wanting to commute five days a week. And I think that a future where you're not commuting five days a week means you're going to need another place to go. I think that over time, what companies will do is they will evaluate their real estate portfolios. They'll try to figure out ways to, to save because what we've been doing has been entirely inefficient relative to people, you know, thinking about real estate as really a warehouse for employees, as opposed to thinking about it relative to what are the tools that my people need to do their various jobs. And you get to a much more engaged employee population if you think about it that way. You also get to better outcomes from a business perspective. You get to more efficient outcomes. So finally, where do you see competition going? Obviously, you have your company now. WeWork itself is still out there. There's a flurry of others. Um, is there going to be a race to the bottom in terms of cost, or is it going to come down to kind of who has the real estate advantage? And what do you think your advantage is from a business model point of view over time? Yeah, I think in all real estate, what's happening is you're, you're going to need to have um, a differentiator that's based in service and based in experience. And so that's that's how we've oriented ourselves. That's how I think that a lot of um, operators are orienting themselves in traditional office environments. So our, our differentiator is going to be having an amazing experience, being consumable, completely on demand, uh, close to home, where close to where people live, which is a, a huge need and a huge gap that was surfaced by the by the pandemic. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people desperate to get out of their house right now, or they're being kicked <laughs> out by their spouse. No comment. That's Joel, for sure. <laughs> we really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much.